All right, we have to talk about a nasty virus in our mind. And in fact, it's so nasty, it can kill you or at least kill all the relationships you will have in your life. And it's an old one, even our grandparents had it. And if we are not careful, we will pass it on to the next generation, to our children. And do you know what this virus is called? It's called overthinking. But before we start to expose this nasty bug, make sure you hit the like button because it would help me and my channel out tremendously. And also remember to claim your free 60 minutes charisma analysis where you will find out what your charisma type is and how you can make yourself shine so much that you will attract the right people and right opportunities into your life that will increase the quality of your life. So click the first link in the info box below and let's start. So what is overthinking in general? Overthinking is basically your head protecting your heart. Because in the past you had at some point a very traumatic episode or situation where you had some sort of shock and um, you, you felt being alone or being uh, isolated. And you formed a sort of a coping strategy, so your brain took over with its cognitive um, functions and, and ability and talent to analyze the situation you're in. So you gather all the information about the people surrounding you or the people involved in the situation or the situation by itself. So you don't make the same mistake you did in the past that caused you the pain. And the pain probably led to some sort of suffering. And suffering, this is interesting, suffering is basically the decision to stay in that pain. Because every emotion is addictive to us. May it be the low vibing emotions like anger, fear, sadness, apathy, or the high vibing ones like, like joy, like peace uh, and love. Pain is like such a deep rooted emotion and it makes us some sort of feeling alive in that moment because we feel ourselves. This is why all the poetry of the centuries and love songs exist because we all know this feeling and we love to stay in that feeling and to bathe in it and to swell in it and, and to uh, swell in memories and nostalgia and whatever. And to stay in that pain, to stay in that situation, like um, and also like from our mind to stay in that past moment where we felt that pain and always going back to it, this is what we call suffering. And this is a cognitive decision. We can decide that we do not want to stay in that in that past situation, that past moment anymore. It's okay to feel pain. It's okay to be sad when somebody left you or died. It's okay to, to feel angry at some points and, and be triggered and, and whatever. It's all okay to have this pain, but to stay in it and revisit it all the time. This is what we call suffering. And suffering is only a punishment for yourself. Nobody cares if you're suffering. If you're angry at someone, then you then you suffer and you want to punish that other person with the feelings you have but the other person doesn't care so this as a side note for suffering so it's a cognitive decision pain is okay anger is okay feel it let it go but don't revisit that emotion and that situation because that's in the past let's focus on the moment you're in and build a better future ow Jeez, what was that for? It doesn't matter. It's in the past. Yeah, but it still hurts. Oh, yes, the past can hurt. But the way I see it, you can either run from it or learn from it. But let's go back to overthinking. And maybe you had a situation like this where you were like in school as a child and you liked that other person in, the, in your class. And you, you wrote a love letter like, uh, do you like me? Yes, no, maybe. You, you try to pass it to that, uh, to that other kid. And one of the other kids just stole it and uh, read it out loud in front of everyone. And this, would, this was an embarrassing moment. Probably had it like this. And it, the, the whole class was like, Oh, Tom loves Sarah or Sarah loves Tom or whatever. This was like probably so traumatic and embarrassing. And it triggered an alarm signal in your, in your mind and in your body. Because in this moment you were presented with a primal fear. That's a fear that every person on the world has. And it's probably the fear of being abandoned, the fear of being lonely, the fear of being isolated. Because you can see the class that laughed at you because of the love letter um, as your group, as your peer group. The group that should, um, should provide you with all the resources and safety. But you misbehaved in sending or writing this love letter. 
and they gave you a final warning by making fun of you, by mocking you. This final warning stuck in you and in your bones and in your cells that you should never do this again, that you should never speak from your heart again. And um, you, you should always keep your emotions by yourself and do not express them. Because otherwise, the next time, you will probably kick out of the group, out of the cave, out of the safety of the group. So you, won't, so you will be alone in the wilderness and all the beasts out there will, will uh, eat you. You will be easy prey for them. Or the next winter you will starve and freeze to death. So the group will not provide you with that resources or safety. So in this moment we learn that it's not okay to say what we want or to say that we like someone or say what we don't like. Because this expressing of ourselves, of our behavior, of our true self is not okay, is not allowed and not, um, not wanted to be seen by the group. So we suppress ourselves, we hide ourselves, we hide our heart and we build a wall around it. And after so many years, like 10 years, 20 years, sometimes 40, 50 years, I see that in, in people all the time. They have their heart closed so much and they ask themselves why they cannot lead a normal loving relationship or why, why they don't have the ability to let someone near them or why they scare away all the time uh, the people they love. Because it's this, because we learned at a young age that it's not okay to show ourselves, to show our vulnerability, to show what we want and what we like and who we really are and truly are. And the scary part of it, it happens to everyone in some extent. Like it's, there are severe cases, but there are not so severe cases. There are easy cases maybe. But it happens to everyone in some extent. So everyone on earth has an experience like this. And this is so important to understand because like the the person that was like probably angry to you at the um at the checkout in the supermarket or whatever has probably also a closed heart and there's the saying hurt people hurt people so next time somebody is like angry with you or shouting at you just remember that this person is probably hurt and doesn't mean it so because we build this coping strategy that we should not express our emotion, we are in constant survival mode when it comes to expressing emotions and to feeling them and like to show um, our affection to someone, that we like someone and we start this cycle in our brain that uh, we should not do this and we, we, we try to gather all the information we have that we do not misstep and will not be kicked out of the group because we are faced with the fear of isolation so we would not like uh, being eaten by, by a tiger or so or freeze to death in the winter. So this is when overthinking starts and we try to take the second chance we got very seriously. Um, we try to start with this coping strategy or to tap in in this coping strategy and distance ourselves further and further away from our heart and from our true being and from our truth and from our wishes and our boundaries and more and more to uh, build a habit that we please all other people around us and go further and further away from our true being. So you might probably like someone and this person stands in front of you and your heart is beating like crazy and you're totally in love and butterflies all over your body. But you do not trust this impulse and this feeling. You probably think also it's wrong to feel that because you do not have all the necessary informations or the indicators of interest from that other person. So you heighten your senses. You try to figure out what the other person is thinking and you try to find all the dangers that can hide behind the next corner. And this leads more and more to overthinking and it takes you further and further away from your true being. And this leads to regret. Like, and again, you, you did not talk to that special person you would like to pull into your life, you would like to get to know. Again, you didn't do it. And you, you sit at home and you regret and you think that you're worthless and not worthy of love and you will never have a fulfilled relationship or love life. And this is, this is not true. This is total crap. The only thing is that you built a habit in, in a way early stage of your life that it is not okay to show your true feelings. And you start to compensate it by overthinking, by tapping into what you learned during that part of your life, that thinking is the solution for everything. You're bad at math, so you start to think more and you, you learn more and, and 
and work more with your brain so you have a better grade at the end of the year. So this is a solution and, and habit you build that um, thinking more about a, uh, about a social interaction, about your social life, about your emotions, um, that would lead to the desired outcome but it takes you further and further away from what you really want. So and I think the only real solution to handle overthinking and to work against it and to build a really healthy habit of sharing your thoughts and to know that you're worthy of love and that you're good enough is to not tap into that fear of isolation. It is not real. You will not be kicked out of your group, of your peer group, of the community when you speak from your heart. Actually, the opposite is true. The exact opposite is true. We people value people that speak from their heart because this takes courage, not only in, a, in the time we are in, but in general. This takes a great amount of leadership and we like people that step forward and speak from their heart, speak their truth. We like to follow these people. So I want to encourage you, always tap into the love. Never, 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 never again follow the fear. Never again. You don't need to be scared. When you feel scared the next time, please remember, there is no harm. The fear is not real. And it gets bigger and bigger the more you think about it. It's the same with people that are afraid of spiders. The spider in their mind is bigger than it really is. If you're afraid of heights, you're way higher up than you really are. So it's all in your mind. The fear is irrational and you know that. The next time you feel it, you feel that you're not good enough and you should not share your emotions. Please remember, tap into the love. Decide for love. The love for yourself, the love for the other person, the love for humanity by itself. Decide that you speak for yourself, speak from your heart. Every time you do that, you build the habit of tearing down these walls around your heart. You build up so, so greatly in the past decades of your life. And I know this can be scary. I totally know that. And I totally know that you probably, the first time you do it, feel bad afterwards because it doesn't feel right. Press through that. Just do it one more time the next time. And I promise you it will get better. It will be better afterwards anyways, because every time you, you tapped into the fear and decided to uh, be, be ruled by the fear and to not say what you want, you regret it afterwards. You know that. But the one time, the first time you will tap into the love and speak up for yourself and speak from your heart, you will feel that it is right and you will not regret what you did because you felt seen. You will not regret this. So and I know this can be scary. So if you need help with this, click the first link in the description and let's talk. Book your free charisma analysis, 60 minutes free charisma analysis and let's talk. We will find out what hinders you to be your true authentic self and be the one that shines all over the place and pulls people, attracts people and the right people and the right opportunities into your life. Click the first link in the description below, fill out this form on the next page you will see and we will talk soon then. And until then, click the like button. Thank you for watching and also watch this video.